Okay, here's what the end of the project looks like. And there's my assistance. And that's a 44 caliber double barrel flintlock. As with any project, you got your startup. You got a, in this case, we got demo to do. Furniture, uh, curtains, curtain rods, hangers. I got to tape off the windows, of course, so that uh, the, the light doesn't blind the camera. There's my daughter, she's helping, of course. She actually does like helping when she's not busy doing everything else in her life. Anyway, I'm going to be building a, a, a false wall on top of the existing wall. There's several reasons I'm going to do that, and I'll go into detail here shortly. First, we got to get all the trim off. Uh, the problem here is I wanted to take the wood trim framing out of the window boxes, but the way it was attached to the windows themselves, I was afraid I was going to damage. So I had to make a slight alteration in my plans. Now here what I'm doing is I'm going to take and I'm drawing a line that's two and a half inches from the wall. And I'm stapling down the carpet about every three to four inches so that I can remove a two inch strip. The purpose of this will become apparent here in just a second, but it's really important to do this. Eventually we'll replace this carpet and the staples will become unimportant. They'll be able to remove them easily when we, we re-carpet the bedroom. But we got to get all this stuff out so that I can uh, start putting the false wall up. The false wall is made up of two by threes laid on edge, laid flat, I mean, and uh, the purpose of that is so I can build a pocket and run electrical. It also adds a little bit of insulation value. It's uh, a sealed airspace. Anyway, this, this uh, fireplace, this LED fireplace, is six inches deep. If I was just to hang that on the wall, it, it just looked tacky. So what I'm doing is I'm going to recess it in the wall about three inches so it, it looks like it's built in, which is the goal here. Now, of course, it has to be plugged in, so i got to get power up there. I don't want to open up the existing wall and, and damage the, the, the barrier, the insulation barrier there, or run electrical wires in the existing wall. That will disturb all that insulation. So by building a false wall, I can actually give myself a 2-inch pocket with just wood and drywall. These 2 by 3s laid flat like this gives me an inch and a half depth. And then when I go ahead and... Uh, add a half inch drywall now I've got a two inch pocket and the stone is about three quarters inch thick so we're, we're, we're right approaching three inches of depth so it works out perfect for this the other benefit too is when I run the wires you'll see in a, in a minute when I put the electrical outlet in for the fireplace and run it down and connect it into the existing outlet I don't have to open up the wall at all all I have to do is run the wire in the new false wall and it's perfectly suited. One thing I'd like to, to note is these two by threes, they need to be glued and screwed to the wall and the screws need to penetrate into existing framing as much as possible. For the simple reason, we're going to be hanging 100 pounds of sheetrock on that framing as well as 400 pounds of synthetic stone. All that weight could come down if it's not well attached. So make sure you, you find framing existing structure as much as possible. It really didn't cost that much to add the wood and the drywall, but it gave me the benefit of that depth I wanted. I lost, what, two inches of my bedroom. Now here I put a, uh, a two by four rectangular box on edge on the wall, and I tied it into an existing two by four in the wall. And then I'm running the electrical wires down inside the new framing I put an extension box on the wall down where the original outlet was and then brought the wire right out where I can tie it into that outlet. Nice, simple, elegant solution. I don't have to open up a wall. It's a little extra work to build the drywall, but um, no problem whatsoever. Okay, here's day two. I'm hooking up the outlet. Um, 
It's just a simple function of wiring. I put an extension box in the wall and I hot wired it right into the existing outlet. Now here's an important point. Um, the first course of stone needs to set overnight so the adhesive is, is completely cured. Uh, if you don't, when you stack additional stone on it, what can happen is it can slide down the wall a little bit while the, the adhesive is curing and you, you don't want that. I'm using my laser level, of course, to make sure the first course is absolutely level. It's really important. Okay, day three, we're going to start putting some stone on the wall. You can't, you can't do it all in one day, so you might as well not try, but uh, you want to do four or five courses. The biggest trick to putting the stone on the wall is to maintain random components. Colors, shapes, positions. Um, the whole idea of this stuff is supposed to look like a random stack stone, so that's what you have to do. It can be a kind of a bit of a pain though trying to maintain that randomness. It really it really gets to be more challenging than I thought. This is the uh, the second time I've used this stone, and uh, it's easy to use. But again, if you're trying to maintain random patterns and shapes, that is the big challenge to this. But uh, here it is. We're just gluing it on the wall, and I'm working across as I go. One important point is use a damp sponge to wipe off the back of each of the stone before you apply the adhesive. The back of the stone has got dust from manufacturing process and that'll just weaken your bond if you don't clean it off. Very important. Yeah, watching this is just as much fun as doing it. I hope you guys are enjoying my my editing. I'm I'm think I'm definitely improving on my video editing skills. It is probably the most challenging part of doing all this stuff. Anyway, the corner blocks right now are going up and you can see they're they're really tricky because every one has got to be cut to fit and maintaining random patterns. So, but it's it's working out. Let me know what you think of my video editing please. Okay, next day it's just uh, more of the same. Now you can see how I put the stone right over the electrical box. Now the box is covered, protected, can't see it. Perfectly safe, perfectly suitable way to mount that. But again, this is just a, a process of rinse and repeat. Pick colors, get sizes, put some glue on it, and get the next piece. You want to maintain that randomness in position, size, color, all those things. And it really is the most difficult part of this whole process. Okay, here I'm setting the fireplace to make sure it's it's working, everything is the way I want. These stones you see me putting in right now, I'm putting those in at a 45 degree angle. And the idea here is the heat comes out of this fireplace and this allows it to deflect away from the wall a little bit. It kind of adds the effect of looking like a, a bit of a chimney or flue. When it's all done, you'll see what I mean. Anyway, this is the last bit of stone that's going up, and the wall is almost done. It does get a bit monotonous. Uh, it really, really does. But it sure does have a nice effect when it's all done, especially when the lights are down low. It's beautiful. Now here's a little thing that I had to do. The wraps around the corner, and here's an insert. You can see this. What this is is the the stone itself doesn't always blend perfectly so i'm just using a chisel to, to to scrape off the little edges and nipples that stick out and what that does is just blends them in but at the same time it also exposes the underlying aggregate the color on these stones is is fairly thin on the surface so while it's deep it's not deep enough to, to handle the scraping 
So what I did is I went to the store and I got two cans of flat in latex paint. One that would match the darkest color of the darkest stone on the wall. The other matched the lightest color. And then I simply just used a, a small brush and I blended the two colors together as needed around the windows wherever there was um, uncolored stone where you could see the, the substrate of the stone. I just used this uh, latex flat to kind of blend it in and make it disappear. And it worked out perfect. It's just a matter of you're, you're not trying to paint, you're just splotching it in. Then I use a, uh, a sponge to kind of smooth it over and that kind of blends it into the stone. You're just feathering the surfaces in. Okay, now all I'm doing is I'm going to paint these windows. Um, just a semi-gloss white. And I put, if you see down there, I put new window sills in along with the front molding that just overhangs the stone. I used a latex caulk to, to make sure everything blended in nice and neat. My wife has got an incredible talent. If I'm doing something with my hands, greasy, dirty, painting, or I'm up on a ladder, she knows exactly when to call me to ask me some question. Or just to say hi. I don't know how she does it, but if I'm doing something like that, she inevitably will call me. Anyway, the process here is just painting. No big deal. Both windows. I want you to take note. That's a 44 caliber double barrel flintlock muzzle loader. Yes, it works. And it's gorgeous. Alas, uh, it's not very impressive to my wife. So we're putting the curtains back up. I think the shotgun over the fireplace, even if it's a fake fireplace, is beautiful. But, you know, we don't always agree on little things like that. Like the position of a chair. Yep, we've been married a long time. End of argument. Anyway, just putting it back together, making it look pretty, making sure everything's working right. Um, wife's happy. Need I say more? Are you videotaping still? You good? No, don't put your fingers in front of it, honey. Alright, hit stop. Alright, hit stop.